Mitchie McGovern, brackets, 26 years old, 12 games played in 2020. And the overall summary of Mitch's season was that it left me wanting more, but I want to dive a little deeper into it. Um, you know, the expectation is, and the frustration is born out of a few things. Number one, the talent. It's clearly there. It's clearly there. He's clearly a talented player. We would not have targeted him. Sauce would not have targeted him. And, you know, the list management team would not have targeted him had there not been serious talent there. So there's that. What he's paid, look, I've, I've, I've had some criticism come my way this year because a lot of people out there think that you shouldn't be talking about what a player's earning when uh, when judging their performance. Oh, look, I disagree. I come from the school of thought that, you know, especially in a sport where you have a salary cap, you have to spend X amount of dollars or you only have X amount of dollars to, to invest. And this is the business of sport. Now, we've made a significant investment in Mitch McGovern. His salary every year is upwards of what 650 700 some people are reporting it's closer to 800 i think it's probably you know that rule take away 150k it's probably at about 700k a year um and and for that reason there comes expectation you know i'm an arsenal fan so i've got mesut ozil earning 350,000 <laughs> a week to sit on the bench you know he's not being played so i've i've experienced that with with a, a different sport and a team that I follow. But with Mitch, you know, we, we have to see him as an experienced player. He's 26 years old. And I just felt like I didn't get what we need from him. Now, there were, don't get me wrong. There were patches this year, probably three or four rounds where he played some pretty good footy. And I'm talking about rounds three, four, and six. So, you know, round five against St. Kilda, he was no good. A lot of them were no good. But rounds three, four, and six, he managed to kick two goals in those games. He had 10 touches against the Bombers, 12 against the Dogs. That was pretty much all we saw from him in terms of really p performing well. He, oh my God, believe this. After the Western Bulldogs game in round six, he did not kick another. He kicked one goal in round 17 against the Crows, and that was it. Now, he played against Port, goalless. He played against North Melbourne, goalless. He then missed five games, so we'll give him that, and then he played the remaining four games of the season, and he kicked one goal out of his last four. Uh, I'll, I'll give him credit, I'll give him a bit of an out because he missed five games, so I won't count the games before that, but it was so below par for me, for Mitch, from Mitch McGovern, and you know, I'm not having a personal shot at him, but I mean, I'm listening to Stephen Silvani on, on the SEN interview when they talked about Mitch McGovern, uh, and they, you know, you know, what happened there was it the wrong choice, and he he sort of conceded, and this is coming from you know one of the key com key guys that actually recruited him. Um, I don't know what to do here. I don't know what the situation is. He was brought in as you know this is these words from Stephen Suvani's mouth. He was brought in because they thought he would provide some X factor and he'd get off the leash because we've got Harry and Charlie who would be a lot you know a handful for the defenders on the other side. So we, they thought that Mitch would be able to play that third string forward and get off the leash and, and, and jag a few. Now, for a number of reasons, it hasn't happened. Now, Charlie hasn't played, so there's that. That hurts. Um, but with that, you, you would expect Mitch McGovern to slot into that more, you know, that, you know, that more responsible role where he has to take on more. And we just didn't see it. So there's been a notion about we should now play him in defense, you know, because his brother is an all Australian defender and Mitch played five games as a defender and Maybe that is the way to go. But for me, when you spend so much money on a forward, for you to have to then play him in defense, why'd you buy him? You know, why would you buy him? Now, maybe maybe there is a case to be made that, hey, we're a team that wants versatility and, you know, it worked with Liam Jones. The only difference is Liam Jones was not paid and recruited and, and poached the way that, that Mitch McGovern was. Now, if we talk about Mitch McGovern as a defender... That would mean someone like a Liam Jones, Jacob Wiedering, or Caleb Marchbank needs to come out of that back line. Now, I don't see it being Wiedering. I certainly don't see it being Caleb Marchbank. And, and Liam Jones, I mean, he's in the leadership group. He had a pretty good year in 2020. Why would you get rid of him? What, why would you do that? So I don't see the merit in doing that. So then when you talk about the pockets and the, and the flankers, well, we know we think that Saad's coming. We think, and we're pretty sure that Williams is coming. Doherty, Williamson, Newman, Plowman, where is Mitch McGovern going to fit in that back line? Like, who, whose spot is he taking and who are we going to change roles for? So there's that situation. So for me, he's got to be a forward. He has to be a forward. He's got to figure it out. 
Um, I wonder, is anybody giving him some harsh realities? I think he is now at a point where, okay, the first year he had that fracture in the back. Okay, maybe you can give him an out. But his preparation was, was not was not good enough in 2020. He needs to be one of our best players for me. He needs to be one of our fittest players for me and hardest working players. And I don't think he's worked hard enough. Uh, I'm sure he works hard, don't get me wrong. Every player that goes out there gives it their all. Um, But I, I can't help but feel from the outside looking in, there needs to be a sit down and a harsh reality given to him. And then more importantly than that, He's got to look himself in the mirror. He's got to look himself in the mirror and have some pride in himself. You know, what am I doing here? I am absolutely stealing a wage here. We've invested so much of our resources into him and we haven't got a return yet. Now, do I back him in? Of course I do. But to be honest with you, I'm just saying that because I'm a fanatical Carlton supporter and I love the club and I want to always look at it from an optimistic point of view. Do we give up on him? I don't think we can. I, I, I don't think we can. I know some people talk about maybe we should trade him. Who in their right mind would take on his salary? I don't know. Um, I don't think we should be doing that. I, I just think there needs to be a, a better, I don't know, there needs to be a way to get the best out of him. Out of him, And it starts with him. So I'll leave it at that. I feel like I'm rambling on a little bit, but this one hurts me because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in him and He's let me down a lot. You know, I'm a big, and us, us, I think we're all believers, but he's let us down. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, but I'll, I will turn it to you. Obviously, full respect to every player that, you know, we talk about, you know, we criticize them not to take pot shots at them personally. It's criticism because we're here to win premierships. We want to be successful. We we live and breathe and die for this football club as supporters. We are the lifeblood of this football club you know maybe some of these players get to off season they completely switch off well we don't because this is our life (laughs) so anyway share your thoughts what do you think about mitch mcgovern am i completely off the mark um am i somewhere near the mark let me know what you think i'd love to have a really good discussion about this one (laughs) 